Hello there, I've tagged a few of you as well and uh, hopefully a few more can join on today. Um, so I've been quite busy this week, it's been a bit of a strange time driving backwards and forwards to London to uh, pack up our flat. But um, anyway, that's uh, pretty much all done and just got the papers to sign now and then uh, I'll be based out in the country permanently and um, it's going to be an exciting time with setting up a little place in New Zealand. Uh, which I'm hoping to turn into a gallery come residency type um, you know, type place and uh, run various art events um, from from New Zealand as well. So hopefully after this COVID thing settles down, we'll have a better picture of what uh, what that's going to look like. But I'll certainly look forward to keeping you informed and letting you know how the uh, how the project is going on. So I'd, I'd just quite like to uh, have some sort of uh, international connections with New Zealand and the concept of the environment, perhaps. Uh, but it could be it could be anything. It could also be an opportunity for people to go to New Zealand and stay for a little while and paint. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to those, those changes. But we'll be living in, in the UK and that. You know, so that will mean uh, the house will be, you know, there for people to use. Anyway, that's just on the aside. But I thought it's quite nice. Hi, hi, Georgina. Nice to see you. Um, I just thought it would be quite nice to just have a little recap of some of the things that we have done over the uh, COVID lockdown, uh, or, or rather, some of the projects that, that I've been doing too. And um, you know, just uh, sometimes just taking a step back. So I've had a, a little period of doing some quite sort of real work uh, just just really just as a chance to um, you know just paint my local area and and really just enjoy that but I always come back to some sense of abstraction of those ideas so I find just um, you know swinging like a pendulum really between uh, realism and abstraction and I can find where I sit then with you know with combining the two it, it is an idea of dualism really and so you know how do we do that but you know sometimes you don't want um, just to be just in the pure abstract you, you want it to be based on something that you know has some sort of narrative uh, with you know with what you're working and, and you know that though the landscape uh, can inspire it doesn't have to be the complete narrative and the work itself and what the painting is giving back to you uh, can be the narrative. Hi, hi, Lee. Nice to see you. Hi, Valerie. That's brilliant. Uh, so pleased that you are here because I've got some interesting things to talk about today uh, as far as... Um, uh, painting concepts go and I know you know with modern art you know a lot of it is conceptual and a little bit of that conceptual sort of seeps into our work anyway just because of the environment that we live in and you know it's 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 the, the way ideas are and you know we've got modern materials to work with which um, you know it's nice to embrace all different sorts of uh, new things and I want to talk to you today about this artist or certainly uh, include this guy in to my uh, discussion and his name is Ian McKeever and he's a very interesting uh, uh, he's very interesting uh, uh, he's abstract uh, though his work does look like figurative landscape watching hi Jeanette nice to see you uh, his work does look like, uh, in some ways, um, uh, landscape. And I'll show you some of that work, uh, where he combines photography and drawing. So, black and white photography, and I do quite a lot of photography. I don't know, are there many of you, are many of you interested in photography? Uh, that's, uh, you know... Um, yeah, something that I find a, you know, a, a real, um, I find it inspirational to, uh, nice to see you Jeanette, I'm just going to put my microphone on, sorry I forgot that, my daughter will be cross, so she hasn't come down to the studio, because it's a, bit of a, a little bit of a trick, anyway, I'll put the microphone on, that'll make it easier for you to hear through the rain. Um, I'm really interested in photography and a lot of us, you know, we have holidays or we've got things in the past and we look back over snapshots and, you know, photography is a big part of our life and, you know, there's a, there's a point where we sort of want to combine a sense of photography with our drawing. 
and th this is what Ian McKeever is doing. And so I've been taking a lot of photographs. Hi Libby, nice to see you. Hi Aneka. Um, I've been taking, you know, lots of photographs over the last few uh, weeks on the hedgerows as they're developing. And so these hedgerows, uh, you know, they're quite precious. Um, you know, they they're, could even be thousands of years old, really, the, the basis of these. And they, they have stone walls which have crumbled away. They've got all different variety of plants. And when they take them away and then they replant them, they're never quite the same. So these hedgerows are very special in our... Um, uh, in our environment and so there is something about not just the fact of the physicality of them but perhaps that uh, that memory that ancestral memory the memory of uh, the, the way that the land is used the way that the light is uh, caught in the hedgerows and perhaps to some extent that's what I'm really interested in I love the plants and I do lots of plant printing and I get up close and I do all that but I'm interested in perhaps the more the emotional energy that a hedgerow represents for us in our environment so imprint by Ian McKeever is uh, one of those things we're going to be looking at sorry there's my wall, one wall of the studio I'm going to bring you down here because that's where we're going to be spending most of the time today and you know the the uh, he's he's written several uh, uh, several little things in here, and I think the first quote that I will read for you from here is um, the test of uh, a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in the mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. So I'm not quite sure, you know, what you what you think of that, but um, you know, it sounds like multitasking to me. But it's the interesting uh, what he's talking about is this ability to look at photography and painting simultaneously, uh, without copying the photograph as a as a slavish copy or without painting without reason. So. This is a, a fabulous piece of his work where he has combined photography and drawing. Uh, lovely to see you, Nicole. Hi, Heather. Um, so we've got, uh, you know, sort of elements of tree fo photography and elements of drawing with kind of uh, almost like shafts of light, that feeling of light coming down into the forest and elements of drawing. And what he says about drawing is it's very much a, um, a, a sort of a feeling of chaos. You know, there's a, there's a movement and, you know, um, a addition and subtractive drawing, you know, uh, uncontrolled mark making. So drawing is very spontaneous like that. And, you know, which is exactly the opposite to photography. Photography ho holds a moment in time and it holds it very still so it controls the chaos it, it's it's a it's a very particular moment in time that is just frozen and and it's so therefore it it's a completely different language to drawing so it's a real dualism between ideas of something static and something with pure energy and then to combine these two, um, like t these two ideas, I think makes for for an interesting exploration in your work. So, we've been doing a lot of work with inks, which um, we're just pouring and letting things happen uh, by chemistry, and we've been doing a lot of observation, like printmaking, and so those things formed very strong um, strong images. So a few years ago, so this is going back to, so I make lots of books of my photography and this is going back to 2018 um, and that's when I was a, a, a workshop I was taking in Switzerland and really I'm just, I'm just looking at these, um, you know, just the shape and the colour and the light and um, things like that. Uh, but I also made a series of paintings on glass and really it was about... Uh, looking hi Hilary hi Leslie uh, nice to see you uh, so these paintings are oil and cold wax on glass and it was the idea of trying to capture that essence of light 
which is normally sort of something quite static but because it's done on glass there's a sense of depth and and illusion that happens with that and you know i was I'm, I'm still very interested in this i'm still still very interested in pursuing this you know as an idea so you know that's where i'm using photography and it very much relates to the light and the sky really um, so i'm very much uh, interested in photography as uh, a starting a jumping off point for looking at how i could progress work so uh these are um some bits and pieces that i did uh through the lockdown and they are uh, modulations of printmaking hi pamela lovely to see you um, they are um, modulations of printmaking and using collage. So the juxtaposition of something that is fixed, like that has gone through the press, with something that is painted. Now, uh, I had the for uh, good fortune to just work with Jeff Hurst on a course that he was doing, <coughs> which was experimental drawing. So these, these works are really part of that. And I did, I did quite a few of these, actually. Um, that's another one. So this, um, this is actually a print that I've taken off uh, a piece of slate. Uh, and I've combined it with something that was uh, looking at the light on that slate. And you know, just combining the the print with some uh, sort of painting, printmaking process, and uh, that's another one as well. So just thinking of of the way that the light was sitting on that surface, but the combination of the graphic uh, with the more painterly also creates an interesting dualism of ideas. So I, as I say, I did quite a few of these, and some of them. Um, with backgrounds like this have got uh, river sand and glue with them as well so that's where I'm picking up from today is w with this little section here so you know all these experiments and things like that you know it's it's sometimes you just they sit in a drawer and they don't do anything and then you come back to them you, re you revisit them because of something triggers your mind or something like that so that's what's happened with those um, So we uh, we then I think you might remember um, we uh, did some drawing down by the river, and it was quite a big drawing that I did down by the river. And so the process of that became something of looking at the ripples within the river, just the ripples on the water, and and the trees, um, but. As it transpired, for me, the structure of those ripples became more like trees. So these weren't intended to be trees. They were intended to be uh, sort of um, literally like this. So I was just looking at the water and, and, and drawing the shapes. But I don't know. I, I just I kind of made that into a more landscape form. And so, you know, I, I had to leave this. I've, I've you know, li literally torn up this drawing and, and left it and pinned it so that I can move things around as I want. I'm not locked in. I'm not gluing it. So, uh, and there's a piece of transparency here as well, which I've used. And, you know, I probably would like to get on with a little bit of shellac onto here as well. But, I, you know, that's another another day. So this is, a, this is the beginning of a project for me, and I'm just revisiting that so I'll just pop that up there so you can just see a little bit of that in the background there now so I don't think I've shown you any of these little experiments that I've been doing <laughs> uh, there's another one with the uh, transparency as well printing on transparency and layering that so c considering this like photography against drawing uh, that's another sort of gr very graphic uh, using a very graphic shape against a transparent um, surface. So this is probably where I kind of ended up with this because uh, I started um, drawing and painting on transparent material 
and then and then layering them up. So this kind of relates to the to the glass paintings. Now this is actually a pour of oil and cold wax with titanium white pigment. Uh, I didn't really intend to use oil and cold wax for it, but um, I could have done this in acrylic and it might have been a little easier had I done it in acrylic. But you know, you could use anything under this transparency, like a map or, or something. Um, you know, you could get some very interesting lines if you had a map underneath there, for example. But um, that pouring, it relates to this sort of forest and the water uh, techniques. And that was an, an original print that I that I did in Ballon Glen. So um, you know, another thing that I might use later to layer over with the transparencies. So just thinking about uh, maybe forests, uh, rhythmical uh, rhythmical forms. Thinking about. Uh, wildflowers and hedgerows uh, then later on I have done a few uh, backgrounds really uh, this is on uh, Archer's oil paper so I can go anyway with it but it's water media and um, oh thanks <laughs> Lee that's great um, the idea of using uh, this layering process of the river so i put basically I, I threw these bits of paper into the river and it's picked up a lot of the river sediment um, so th it's just nature doing what it does and then over the top of that layering uh, mixes of dry pigment into uh, acrylic and why i like that is you you get a, a dispersion or a sense of granulation which you don't really get with just paint uh, there, there's something very interesting about working directly with pigments and I'm using non-toxic pigments I'm using earth pigments here to uh, to do this and um, so again uh, any marks are made just using branches and sticks so again they're also organic lines and marks using whatever is to hand I mean they they did start as ripples but they, <laughs> they've ended up looking like trees to me. So, I, I mean, you could work anyway. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it's just letting the forms be what they are. And, you know, I always relate things back to music. I don't know. I just do. And um, so, you know, these sort of uh, lines and dots to me are very much like the lines and dots of music. So I'm interested in that sort of punctuation uh, that, that music creates. Uh, a sort of a rhythmical beat a it, it has a punctuation in time that's what music is isn't it it's a note played at a certain time that's why they say a note played at the uh, wrong time is the wrong note but time matters in music and these are like the punctuations and then we have the sort of over the top of that we might have a kind of a lyrical idea of a melody and I kind of see that more like the structure of the marks that are made and maybe the pouring, you know, that's more like the lyrical side, the punctuation is the, this more graphic energy. So the music does feature. Uh, I'm not, I don't need to collage that on. I have, we did a whole lot of collages with music, I think if you remember with the lilacs. So today I'm not going to collage music on, but I, I did want to just help you with that to help you maybe to see how you could use something uh, quite you know on another or on another platform to inform and inspire you to think about how you're making your marks or the results of your drawings and ideas you've got some sheet music at home it's quite fun to play around with that so looking at these and you know deciding whether I was going to go horizontal or vertical with that um, I have um, been cleaning out my flat in London so it has been a, tr a treasure trove of all sorts of things including including the Richard Long book so I'm very excited to find this again and some of his works in here I will show you they're quite so though that they're though that they're landscape uh, though that they're landscape inspired, uh, they still have that energy of the integrity of the mark or the integrity of the intention of making the, that that process of mark making. 
Um, it doesn't need to be informed by the landscape, but we see landscape in it. And I think that's quite an interesting way to look at landscape. You know, we don't have to physically uh, paint the tree uh, like in this one is a little bit more figurative but the energy of that that space and the mark and he, he talks a lot about that in this book about how he relates to landscape he and Richard Long that th their processes are quite different it's quite interesting reading about uh, Richard Long as well who walked along the River Avon which is which I've got right outside the studio and he Richard Long wrote and painted all the way he went down there um, but these, uh, these again, and I think what he's looking at, and this is what's so interesting about uh, the transparency idea, is this idea of layering and placing over different, different marks, different forms. You know, the the actual form of the uh, the, the transparency makes a different sort of mark to what you might be doing and sorry drop the microphone um, so uh, make, make a different sort of mark to uh, what you might do with a drawing so what I have done today is I am I have taken uh, transparencies and I don't know if any of you have ever done this so I'll put it on the blank so you can see them au natural but you know you can take a transparency film so when I worked as a teacher I had to uh, type out all the words of the songs onto transparency so I had a lot of these uh, transparent film films lying around at the flat in London left over from my teaching days <laughs> and uh, anyway it was an absolute bonus for today because it, it's helped me to move on with this um, with this work. The Richard Long book. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, Eileen. Uh, but if you Google Richard Long, he lives in Bristol. He's uh, um, He sort of paints using uh, river sand and mud and massive circles and things like that. So you can have a little look at that um, if you Google that. So these are transparencies that I've taken of various landscape things. Things that things that just interested me, and I think um, the one that interested me interested me the most was this one, which was uh, shadows on a table, and I just liked the form of that. So I've just t taken a, pho a photograph of that. Uh, so it was really photographing that moment in time and getting that shadow and using that as the uh, uh, which I will now use as the basis for uh, various uh, um, various processes of layering. So just taking that, you know, I can look at different ways of, of working, whether it's, you know, whether it's layering on here or whether it's writing underneath, uh, whatever I, I feel like, um, you know whatever I feel like layering on top of there and the other piece that I also have which I'm also working on several of these at the moment uh, is multimedia board which I have put uh, slate dust down which is that there so you can buy it so it has a lovely soft gray color and uh, so I've put that there with acrylic binder and let that dry and uh, poured a little bit you probably can't quite see that but I poured a little bit of white pigment on with the acrylic binder as well so the texture is quite interesting and it picks up it picks up quite interestingly if you're just doing loose transparent layers with that now you know I could get something like a Posca pen these or, or, or a paint marker like a Liquitex you know and without feeling too restricted about what I was doing you know I could just respond to that line and mark with the acrylic marker I'm not making a painting I'm just making making that feeling of the, the ripples on that water so I can mark directly onto this board, which has been fixed with this acrylic uh, medium. Uh, again, you know, let that shine. 
uh, I could I could also draw on the transparency as well if I wanted to add another layer of uh, of something onto the transparency. For example, if I had the trees and said, uh, you know, I just wanted to. Um, Come in and mark some of those. So this is going to be an, something that then can be layered, you know, there, which looks quite it looks quite different to the unpainted. It's quite it's actually quite interesting. Um, it looks funny on the reverse side, but you know you can keep working with that idea. Uh, of, of drawing over this transparency. So you just use a photocopying transparency. You can just buy that online if you want or get that from your stationery shop. You just put it into your photocopier. I do find it works better with just black and white if that's what you, if you want to try this idea. So it gives you an intensity uh, with, uh, with that light coming through and you could play with that a bit or I could use it on one with uh, with the lines on it as well so you can see now with these lines these other lines going through the back it creates quite a um, that's quite that's a really interesting dynamic starting to happen there or with the white so you know I might perhaps use that but I think there's a sy synergy between these these sort of marks so yeah have have a go with that now you know I mean you you can even paint on that now what I've been doing with uh, with that so I'll carry on working on this one a little bit more so yeah try uh, I do like the multimedia board because it's a because it's a solid surface it does make for um, it's sort of easier you can get a bit more aggressive it's a little bit more delicate perhaps with the paper or you can get a little bit of a bit of buckling but I've been working with casein paint I don't know if any of you know casein paint um, that's it there so this is a milk product it's a, a milk based paint it's, so it's a it's a water it is a water media so it's quite nice if you get something wrong you, you can you can just wash it off uh, but it dries to a solid film so that's that's also useful but you know I might work with some casein over the top of that and you know find a way to uh... I just like the I like the I like the uh, I like the look of casein it has a very um, soft so you know if I wanted to uh, just uh... Just wanted to get on there with the casein, and then it has an interesting property to it because it disperses. So I can spray that with water. And you'll see that it, uh, it's very different to acrylic. It has a totally different, it behaves with water in a totally different way. It drips really easily. Doesn't matter if it goes on to that either. So now we're getting some interaction between the the different layers uh, using probably using similar uh, probably using similar. Uh, techniques there as well but the casein is is really interesting the, the way it disperses uh, it, it doesn't form sticky lumps you can spray it and you get this uh, um, you can drop pigment into that as well and it looks really interesting I could drop uh, I could drop some titanium white into that for example just white pigment like that I would leave it to dry, I wouldn't really mess around with that, but it works really well with the casein pigment. Now 
it will cause a kind of a granulation there. And that, that will dry. See, that will look like some of the other pieces I showed you just earlier that were um, that were with the different layers. And the other thing I can use is also dispersion ink. That's another, another interesting thing to use with these transparencies. So I'll just move that one aside and leave that to dry and just see where we end up with that. And let's get... this one for example so this has the slate dust in it which is what's giving the gray color so that's slate dust uh, mixed with acrylic binder and then white pigment with uh, acrylic binder as well that hasn't got casein casein would work very well on this as well if I if I wanted to uh, use that um, but let's pop uh, you know let's uh, let's play with that with the dispersion ink so it's just a little spray I just bought this on Amazon I just buy it on Amazon I'm not actually sure what shop you can buy it from in the UK and you know I could just uh, spray where I want to just soften the information so I could use it either I could use it either way and So it's working a bit like the casein because it's got this very nice loose, um, you know, loose veiling effect, which is which is what the oil and cold wax did here with this one on the transparency as well. So it, it, it this has done the same thing, but it's almost like this is a couple of weeks down the track and it's still not 100% dry, but the acrylic and the casein dries a lot better on the uh, transparent film. So, you know, I'll probably just work on that uh, a little bit more and with the, uh, probably with the marker pens as well, you know, if I wanted to get in with some um, writing over the top of that or, uh, you know, um, just, um, just kind of just working with some organic line to go against that you know and it created I've got such interesting sort of spatial depth in there uh, and then you know I might translate some of those things into my paintings or just uh, just leave these as um, as things to you know to frame up or to look at as is again you know you can get that white Posca pen and looking at the way Ian McKeever has worked you know this is really what he's doing He's using that photography as a, uh, a basis for taking a static view on something and using the drawing as the chaos part of your mark, the mark making chaos, um, not being necessarily figurative, but it can be motivated by the landscape. So that, you know, adds that interesting dimension to that as I say you know I do like working with that casein as well to um, uh, to uh, just Let's spray that with water Okay, so that's a couple of ways of, of, you know, looking at some of the work you have made over the last couple of weeks and, you know, just thinking, oh, don't just, don't just leave the work in a drawer and, you know, um, think, oh, I don't know, you know, what, what am I going to do with it? But, you know, maybe, you know, take, take some of those pieces, those experimental pieces that you've made and, you know, play around with them like this by layering and adding uh, different materials, you know, particularly the Posca markers drawing over, drawing over your, uh, over your pieces as well and then revisiting them. You know that's a that's a great way to sort of open up the dialogue for your for your work. In McKeever, uh, let me see where the book's gone. It's a it's a double E. It's not an I. So it is like um, M C K E E 
V E R. I'll write it in for you because this is all back to front when I show you, so it's a bit odd. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I'd love to see what you do as far as um, you know, pushing pushing your drawings and pushing your work into that. But you know, the uh, the idea is, you know, you can develop a whole body of work from from your little studies, and they'll they'll really make your paintings that little bit more. Um, you know, get that little extra abstraction and mark making in them. All right, I hope that's been of interest. And if you have any questions about the materials I've used, uh, please, please let me know. I can type those in at the bottom for you. Okay, happy painting. Bye for now.